Wine and Nerd podcast. This is a brand new year and we're starting things off fresh this year um, with some new crew members, some new shows, films, and hopefully the same fun. And I did write that at that time. Thank you very much. I'm your host, Sarah Belmont, and shout out to Matt Salazar, who is still on holiday. And it is in the middle of January, so I don't know when holiday ends for him. But we're back, and he's going to come back next week to talk all things La La Land and musicals with me. And now, have no fear, because Will Polk is here to talk all things related to this, to a certain Scarlet Speedster and his bad timing in everything he does. Right, Will? That's correct. Hello. Thanks for having me tonight, sir. Yeah, thanks for being here. Are you Should- excited? I'm very excited. This is a lot of fun. I uh, always enjoy listening to you guys, so it's it's great to be part of the the Scene and Nerd podcast family. Yeah, we're we're happy to have you. It's it's a small but then sometimes ginormous family. We're fluctuating, but yeah, I shouldn't have said anything, shouldn't I? Well, it's okay. <laughs> You're really encouraging. <laughs> You're like, no, it's I'm, fine. It was it's, fine. It's all good. It's all good. It's all good. It's all good. Yeah, I'm, okay. I'm, I'm, your, I'm your East Coast, uh, you know, East Coast outpost. How's that? East Coast outpost. Yeah. Nice. Nice. I have no idea what to refer to Alaska as because I, I'm not on the West Coast. You are in the, let's see, you're in the, you are in the, we're in the lower 48, so I guess you are, uh, you know, you can see Russia from your backyard. Uptown, AK town. No, no, I, I shouldn't rhyme ever. I shouldn't even rhyme. <laughs> no, but, you know, I, so the flash is back and we're going to talk Ooh, specifically woo-hoo. about episode 10, borrowing problems from the future pretty decent episode and so essentially what happens is the last episode was when (laughs) and this is totally pun intended but the writers present Barry with Iris's possible future death yes I did do a pun thank you (laughs) 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 and so now he's like questioning and he fears that actual outcome and the writers also do an interesting thing where they pair that contemplation with Caitlin's own fear of who she might become mm-hmm. in future episodes down the line, Killer Frost. And they also juxtapose it with HR's own struggle for redemption on this earth. And I thought together it was a pretty seamless um, weaving of stories. What did you think, Will? Yeah, um, I think... This episode, this this mid season premiere, uh, really did a great job of pivoting from the first half of the season, which was Barry always looking back and everyone dealing with the consequences of Flashpoint. Mm-hmm. To now, you know, now that he you know went to the future for a few months, which which was a uh, great way to look forward and you know shift the focus of Okay, what you know? What challenges he's going to have as a Flash? Is he saw where Savitar kills Iris, and what steps he's going to take to to, to change that? And so instead of him going to the you know the, the seem, seemingly endless loop of Barry right. going back to his mother's death, now <laughs> we're going to now it looks like the the back half of the season is going to be the loop of him going forward to try to prevent Iris' death. And, you know, it's going to be interesting to see if the writers, uh, you know, pick up on the themes that they built up during the first half of the season of learning how to, you know, to dealing with the consequences of, of your actions when you time travel. And, you know, in Jay's point early in the season, Jay Garrick, uh, for our, mm-hmm. our, our, our listeners, um, <laughs> not... Uh, uh, of making sure you know that we're that they're men, not gods. Right. Uh, it'll be interesting to see if Barry re- keeps that in his head as he, uh, you know, as they move forward trying to prevent our success. 
Right. You know, but without characters constantly telling him that he is not a god, because we got plenty of that during the first half of the season. Yeah. Yeah. They don't even mention it. It's already a given. Okay, writers? (laughs) Yes, they do. But, but of course, (laughs) but Barry can't help himself. (laughs) He's He's a fixer. He is. He is a classic fixer. Yes. He, He is. Yes. He cannot leave well enough alone. No, no, but I, I do, I do agree that it's, it's a good refresh button on the show because we've just spent two seasons that are pretty much on a loop of this idea that you're fast enough to go back in time, except you cannot change this one event that um, changed your entire life. And it's, and it's a sacrifice all with a burden, and it really magnifies who Barry Allen is as a character. While at the same time, the writers have now given us Flashpoint, and he's shoulder he's shouldered the weight of the blame for those repercussions. And now he's even looking to the future and seeing problems and things that he wants to prevent because he he has the speed to potentially prevent them, but you never know when you're, when you're working with time, what potentially by changing one outcome, how that may trigger one completely different. And we'll get into that because there's a lot of foreshadowing and some Easter eggs that the writers threw in there. But to, to start, let's just talk about Caitlin and Julian. They had a pretty good dynamic. I liked it. Yeah, I like it. I, I think right now, for Caitlin again and Julian, they don't. Need, they're they're both broken people. So Ooh, harsh. <laughs> well, they are. I mean, Caitlin is still trying to come to grips of, you know, trying not to become Killer Frost. Mm-hmm. Julian is broken because he was Savitar's vessel to, as alchemy. So, mm-hmm. uh, you know, they're they're both vulnerable, and I, I hope that. Are that folks are mature enough to not ship them. We don't need any shipping right now. No. They, just, they need to just fix themselves. And I think, you know, how Julian was such a jerk to her at first when he, whenever she first went to him for help, um, it, w- it was good to see um, the resolution as far as Caitlin, you know. Still reaching out to him and saying, you know, we still would like you to be a part of the team. Oh, I thought you were going for the resolution of her and her cuffs, the same cuffs she uses to prevent her Killer Frost powers. And instead, they gave her a necklace, which is very easily, (laughs) you can very easily rip it off. You can rip it off. I'm just going to, yeah. 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 Well, it's funny. I I remember seeing on Twitter, uh, uh, I got uh, a guy, one of my followers, Skid Flash, his, 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 mm-hmm. his moniker, and he had the great, the best tweet of them all. It's like, okay, Team Flash can, I'm kind of paraphrasing here, but basically they can like solve time travel and everything else, but they can't figure out how to, you know, keep a battery charged for those bracelets. <laughs> yep, yep. I'm like, wait a minute, you oh, guys. Oh, the irony. Yeah, it's like, really? Come on. But, um, you know, I, I, I think. You know, I think Caitlin reaching out to Julian was very important because, and and Julian said it himself, you know, he's used to keeping, you know, his goal is to put Metas in jail. But I think it was a good evolution of his character to realize that, you know, hey, not all Metas, you know, Metas are people too. And they have the same problems that we all have and and coming to grips with, with their powers. And, right. and as someone like Caitlin, she, you know, she she wants to be rid of them. But if she can't get rid of them, then she still wants to be able to use them for good for, with the rest of Team Flash. So. Right. I mean, I really liked their dynamic, and I thought it was an interesting mirroring that they did between this metahuman and this regular human who's been against metahuman since, ever since we met him. But To me, it also kind of felt a little bit convenient because I'm like, did the writers know what they were going to do with Julian after the Savitar reveal? 
are they really like how long can he actually exist in this world will he survive the season what will his role be in the future yeah see and the whole invitation to join team flash to me I, I wonder what the, what the end game is going to be on this because again yeah. in the mid season finale you 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 had the prophecy as far as someone's going to betray the team and so mm-hmm. you know again it, it, will Julian be that one will it be Caitlin will it be Cisco we don't know but I think as the season progresses he's going to play a pretty critical role as far as um, as far as solving this uh, mystery or solving this dilemma that Pink Flash is going to have to protect ours. Right. And I actually, depending on what happens during this second half of the season, season, I probably will want to see Julian kept around for additional seasons because, I mean, I don't know why Arrow can't do this, but the Flash has a pretty good ability to kill off characters yet at they yet still incorporating them into the show mm-hmm. a little bit. So they're never truly gone. And there's always these options or opportunities to bring back characters and re-examine them in a new light. And yeah. I, I just thought of something in terms of your point that Julian makes about always catching metahumans. It would be really interesting because killer frost hopefully is coming, but if if she does come back during the second half and she's at large for Julian then be, to be the one to really be tracking her down. Yeah. And then that's like season four of her trying to hunt. And maybe he feels responsibility for Killer Frost. We'll see. Yeah. And, but also, I think you I'm glad you raised that point, because one of the things that's been missing uh, this season is the Harry who is trying to solve way found ways and even and even from season one with uh harrison slash thawne um mm-hmm. coming up with ways to stop the the metas in central city and yeah. the te- and the team you know i mean cisco is still doing that but i think you know if, cisco, if cisco evolves into bob someone's mm-hmm. going to have to fill that role of being a meta and and, and also i mean julian is coming from this, you know, he, he wasn't a part of that core initial group that came out of star labs. Right. So he, he, you know, he's that wild card that, uh, you know, you can kind of predict now how Cisco and Caitlin very is going to react to things. Julian's going to, you know, he'll mix it up a little bit. So, you know, it, it, it adds an unpredictable element to, to the storyline. It also, at this point, all of the original, Flash team members are Metas. So it's kind of a contradiction for Metas to go after Metas in a strange way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you do need that human element, yeah. which Iris West, of course, brings at the same time. Um, she's not from that scientific end. She's more of that journalistic yeah. damsel in distress at times. So it would Julian would balance that team out a little bit in terms of the humans and meta ratios. Yeah. So that's good. So we're going to jump to another odd couple for this episode, HR and Cisco. Okay. Okay. The Uh, bromance begins. The bromance begins. I hope the bromance ends soon. I want Harry back. (laughs) Well, yeah, he's, he's the best. Harry's the best. Harry's the best. Uh, HR, you know, the thing about the museum is, I guess, it's just trying to, you know, foreshadow. It, it's sort of laying the seed for the eventual Flash Museum. So, right. so, so, you know, so HR does serve that purpose and to, you know, bring science to Central City. <laughs> nice, nice. That was on point. <laughs> but. Uh, you know, but uh, he, he has he has some good contributions to this episode. I thought I think his yes. major contribution wasn't the museum, but actually talking to Barry about time whether times are fixed 
constant thing, or is it fluid? And how and, and can you can you manipulate it and events into the future? Because yeah. I think uh, you know, obviously, even though he's, he's he's a huckster as far as being an actual hard scientist, he you know he he knows enough to be again sort of like Julian, where he's like kind of wild card and a part of the team. I think HR serves that role in that you have all these hard scientists around and, you know, he can play that kind of foil to the rest of them to be like, hey, I'm the kind of the guy on the street that got dropped in here and I can still provide some value add by, you know, helping you deconstruct this, this new dilemma. And in this one... Right. Uh, in this case, it was really getting Barry to like, to, you know, again, sort of like how Harrison and um, and Harry served that role as far as helping the team explain their, you know, the, their dilemma at the time. Harry served that, HR served that role last night and and helping them, you know, basically crack that nut as far as how to handle future events. Yeah. I I also feel like the added context of and I don't know if it's really been mentioned a whole lot before of that he is back for redemption and yeah. I almost want to say this is the first time that's really been brought up and that's right a good point. right that's... then as, as soon as you bring that up it shed it makes him seem like an underdog and yeah. we love rooting for underdogs. We do. We do. Yeah, and even Cisco does, and that's why the bromance has started. Yeah, well, I, I will say, I even t- even while I was like watching an episode, I liked a lot, and I, I even tweeted it out. I was, it was, hey, our old Cisco's back. Yes. Even though he wasn't He's... doing, he even though he wasn't doing the crazy fun names, but I mean, the humor, the 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 light, the the lightness of of our Cisco was 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 back last night after all of the angst that he had in the first part of the season with dealing with uh, dealing with his brother so show. much angst yeah. so much angst which and I, I think, think and I know you mentioned it was a reset and it did feel like that reset like back to season one when they were more light the characters were more light even though there was heavy things going on last in the episode there was still a lightness to it well yeah throughout. yeah be- because it was very much a setup for the second half of the season at the end of it. As soon as you have Barry explain the day that he saw read on the newspaper yeah. and, and it's like in May and you're like, Oh, oh season, season finale, finale time. Yep. Convenient. Very, very. <laughs> I like Mark yeah. It's like all oh, we all we all simultaneously mark the calendars. May twenty third. <laughs> yeah. Right. Right. And then you're just like exposition. Thank you. We have a resolution, but at the same time this is just exposition about how the rest of the season is going to unfold mm-hmm. and all of the Easter eggs and everything. But before we move forward I want to go back to that scene with HR and Barry because you're right. That is very transcendent of Harrison, of Harry. It's just, it's Tom Cavanaugh and Grant Gustin on screen together when they are much more in the context of a father son relationship. Mm -hmm. Their chemistry is so freaking good. It really is. I love it. Yeah. It is just that perfect. And, and I love how they use it. They use it very sparingly, so mm-hmm. you don't get too much of it. And out of the, nowhere, you'll always get that. And anytime I see a scene between them now, my mind instantly goes to, I want to say episode four of this season was the last time we saw Harry. And there was that great moment between yeah. him and Barry about forgiving yourself and yeah. how he was always too easy to forgive himself and Barry was always not so again you also have that come come to par with in context of time travel and how hr is very adamant that barry cannot change what's going to happen to iris and he says i often think a man meets his destiny on the very road he takes to avoid it Mm -hmm. do you think that's true after watching this, or do you think there's potential for you to change the future? I, 
I think there is still, I think there's potential to change the future. Mm-hmm. But, but here's the thing. As we know, Iris may be saved, but something else catastrophic is going to happen. Yes. So, I, you know, so even though, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I think that's, you know, I, when we get to the season finale, I don't know what it is. I, I don't want to start, I'm not going to speculate because uh, we're, you know, we're just getting the second half of the season started. But I think, and I know we'll touch on this later, but the little Easter eggs that were dropped throughout the, the when they go, when they bob to the future, they'll solve some of those things and they may end up saving Iris. But something really, something bad is going to happen to the team. And it may not be a death. It could be, you know, it could be Savitar's prophecy of something worse than death. Right, right, exactly. There's there's still a lot of unknowns in this equation that we're all trying to solve right now in terms of the season, as well as the characters and their own arcs that they're currently on right now. But bef- before we can completely leave HR and Cisco, we have to talk about just Gypsy. She yeah. came. She came. And she's after HR. She is after HR. I guess Do you she- know why. <laughs> um, I, I think I read some spoilers where, uh, or, uh, he violated Earth 19's temporal rules as far as interdimensional travel. Uh, oh. I think I read that in a synopsis of one of the, uh, somewhere today. Um, but all I have to say is, um, you know, I love the Flash. Uh, producers and writers and directors because they are fans just like us. And that ending, mm-hmm. as soon as Gypsy came out of the portal, I was like, man, that's straight up Terminator. <laughs> <laughs> it is. Good call. Good. But, like that. But, but I, that's what, that's what's so, I guess, why the show like touches so many of us is because they're fans just like us. And they just drop those things like all the time throughout each, each episode, which makes it so much fun. Right. And she's from Earth 19. And so it's just good that after creating a new context about HR and who he is and making viewers like him a little bit more, even though it's really hard to get over our giant man crush on um, Harry from last season. Yeah. Still to have Gypsy come and you, and there has been like set photos showing what probably is most definitely earth 19 characters, even their version of the flash. So that just gets me a little bit more excited for the new worlds that we're on the verge of exploring this definitely, season. Definitely. Definitely. And uh, you know, Cisco needs some loving. He, he does. does. He does. He does. And he needs some training. So, you know, <laughs> I, you know, he's getting, more and more comfortable being being by, but uh, from what I understand with Gypsy, she's going to help help him um, explore that further. And, and, and Cisco needs he needs he, he needs some love. Right now, I have to say, out of all of the time talk s- scenes that we had in this episode, HR and Barry were pretty high, but I think West Allen kind of stole the light just because. Candace Patton oh, wow. did she, a really good job in her she, scene. She she slammed it. I mean, she was yeah. yeah I mean, yeah. I, I, where do I begin? Uh, that that the, the time vault revelation oh, was. Oh, the time vault. Uh, yeah, that. Yeah, I, I, I was I was I was sitting here when I was watching it. I was just, you know, the the. Grab a Kleenex, folks. <laughs> yes, yes. It, it is a heartbreaking thing. And I love all of the layers that it explored because at first it was revealing this secret that Barry has been holding and keeping to himself for, for most of the episode. Yeah. And then it was her anger towards him for withholding that information. Mm-hmm. And then you had the realization of what's going to happen. 
And also the fear of what he might do to prevent that from happening. And that got to her, too, where she's like, no, you can't stop being a hero just to save me. Mm -hmm. And then Grant Gustin had a great monologue where he's like, no, that's exactly what I'm going to do. And that's what Joe wants me to do in everything. I mean, the range that they did in that was very very superb and yeah. hats off to them. That was just a great moment. That, and any time they're in the time vault, they always go back to this idea. They've done it now twice this season, um, this episode, and then back in episode eight during the crossover. Mm-hmm. Barry is as obsessed as the fu- is as obsessed with the future as Eobarthon was in season one, and that's brilliant. That is that is excellent storytelling. And I couldn't agree more with what you said about uh, Grant and Candace. I mean, they they did they nailed it. And um, I, you know, I think the part that stood out to me was when Barry swore on his parents' grave um, mm-hmm. that he was not going to let anything happen. And, and 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 you know, it was just a very very powerful scene. And you know, hats off to, to both of them for, for for carrying it off very credibly. Yep. Now the next topic is something that I actually, which is probably on the low end of the spectrum for me, was Kid Flash and the Flash team-up. So I'm going to give it to you to talk about it. Okay. Um, well, I, I thoroughly enjoyed their, the dynamic between um, Barry and, and Wally. Uh, it's, it, it, you know, it, it's, inter- it's funny, you know, the first half of the season... You know, it, it was Joe being overprotective and and you know not and, ho- and trying to hold Wally back. Now it, it, it was Barry, and it was like this. On the one hand, Barry was like, "I want to teach you how to you know be a hero," but on the other hand, it was, you know, know your place, kid. I, I'm, <laughs> I'm, st- <laughs> I'm still I'm still the man here. I, I'm still That's- I'm. I'm still that's the where boot. I put my suit. <laughs> yeah, that's where I put my suit. Exactly, exactly. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, it, 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 it was they have a good rapport between Grant and he and Lonsdale. That that uh, again, I mean, this just it was just, again just it just shows how well casted this show is and how well the actors play off each other. Um, and just from uh, and just from the in universe. Uh, playing out of, uh, of them when, you know, when we first kick off the show and the two of them are together in action, you know, definitely harkens back to the comic, uh, comics and, you know, the, you know, Wally and Barry, uh, doing their thing in Central City and Keystone Cities. And, uh, yeah, it was great. And, and it was, it was, you know, again, for long time, fans of the flash it was very satisfying for me and and, and also for for folks who who may have just discovered a flash recently by the tv show uh you know i think it, it it was a good evolution for both for both wally and barry uh barry and that he's really coming to his own as a hero and can be a mentor sort of like how jay has become to, to barry and well, Barry carrying that same you know thing forward to Wally. Right, right. My, I guess my my issues with it is that, and you do need lightness in this show. So I think that they kind of took this storyline, and that's where a lot of the much more lighthearted parts were taken. And it's always an interesting juxtaposition between Wally and Barry because you basically have the new kid and the veteran. And they're both coming at the same problems from very different perspectives. And so it's that clash of, I have these powers. This is so cool. I'm a badass with Barry, who's more like, so I'm over here contemplating how to prevent your sister's death. Yeah. Just let me work through that right now. (laughs) (laughs) I know it's cool, but there's some stuff happening. So take a chill pill. (laughs) Yes. Yeah. Yeah. The one Oh, I was just going to add, like, the one thing that took me out of it was towards the end, 
how fast was that motorcycle going? Because are we really supposed to believe the plunger or plunger? Yeah, I'm going to totally screw up his name. Like, yeah. he was getting away on a mar- motorcycle with the Flash and Kid Flash chasing him. And, like, that was a pretty large gap, okay? Yeah, yeah. He had a head start. That's, what's, that's my story. <laughs> <laughs> he had a head start. It was fine. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, Barry and Wally had to figure out who, you know, Barry had, I guess, Barry in that situation, given what he knows about the future, I think he was kind of holding back. Mm-hmm. And you know, Wally's probably still learning, con- learning to how to control the speed, and uh, yeah, because you know, you saw he got like he earlier in the episode, he, you know, Plunder like you know got him with his uh, you know his super fut- yep. futuristic ray gun. So, um, so yeah, no, so it's, I, it's good. I, yeah, <laughs> I, I think it's good. I mean, I guess the, the overarching theme here is the. Uh, getting back to West Island and also Kid Flash and, and mm-hmm. Flash is is Joe because is it me or does Joe seem like he's really been on the sidelines a lot this season? It's it's not just you. He has he's he's in dad mode right now. Yeah. And unfortunately, what what my big takeaway of this episode is that it's really nice that all of the team members for a change are, are in on the secret Mm -hmm. and it's not going to take us five episodes for everyone to learn what that secret is like one person at a time. Yeah. Except for Joe who apparently we don't want to tell. And it's kind of, now that I think about it, it's a little bit hypocritical of Iris to Mm -hmm. be the one who deliberately shut that down. Um, because she was very upset when Joe kept, two secrets from her yeah. that um so so it's gonna be interesting but i don't know the writers could be doing something in the back end and they have a reason for yeah. keeping him a little bit at arm's length this year because he, i don't know some yeah. things might happen something might happen or they just uh, or uh, you know get it could be that they're, they're just trying to figure out how to integrate him into these stories this year Right, because the cop element is still a little, it's different this year. I mean, at first it it was pretty good. It was pretty on par with the previous seasons because Barry was working there. Yep. And now we have Julian. And did Barry go back? I was about to ask you that same question. I I, I couldn't tell from yeah if he's working at the back at CCPD or or not. I'm not sure either. I, I don't think that I think the last that we saw he left. Right. And then we had the crossover and I don't believe there was any mention of his employment during the season finale. I, I don't I don't recall even or yeah. even yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And and so that's wait a minute, wait a minute. why I have to go back and look. Did Julian give wait a minute, didn't Julian give Barry his badge back when he came over that to the house? Happened. That might have happened. At the Christmas party? I think that's what happened. Okay. Because they, I think they, they had their, you know, they kissed and made up, so to speak. And I think Julian okay. gave him his badge back. I'll have to go back and look at look at the, season, the finale again. Yeah, and we'll just tweet it out. Yeah. Um, because that's that's very confusing to me now. Yeah. <laughs> like, did it happen? But, you know, and... We can actually now turn our focus to other yeah. very confusing <laughs> Easter <laughs> eggs that they dropped. And not even confusing, because some of them were pretty, like, yeah, that's an Easter egg for future episode. Right. Like, Music Maestro album sales. Yeah. That classic, for those who don't know, that's going to be the crossover episode with Supergirl that's set to air in March. Yes, yeah, it's, it's the Glee reunion. I love it. <laughs> I daring Chris, like I I was I, I kept going on and off of Glee, but then they got brought in Grant Gustin and I fell in love with him and then he kinda left and Darren Chris was there and the moment you hear Darren Chris sing Car- Car- Katy Perry's um oh I know I know the song. I can I can hear the song Teenage Dream okay. as the moment you fall in love with him. Huh. So yes. I'll have to. And now they're gonna they're going from lovers to enemies. Yes. It's sad. It's sad. It's but sad. it's also fun because Melissa Benoist will be there too. So. Yeah. 
Um, Luigi's reopens after a murder. Yep. Random. Okay. Random. Yeah, I was like, I was trying to, I was like, okay, wreck my brain now. What's, what's significant about that? So, <laughs> I was like, did I miss well, something? Did I miss something? <laughs> <laughs> well, I did a classic. I'm just going to do a Google search on Luigi's yeah. in DC Comics. Yeah. <laughs> you never know. <laughs> yeah, I, I, Wikipedia, yeah, DC Wiki is like my friend, whatever. But I see these kind of things, yes. Uh, City is still recovering from a gorilla attack. <sighs> oh, so Grodd mm-hmm. will be back. Broad and two episodes. And two if, episodes, yes. That's a two-parter, yes. yeah. And I guess uh, Slovar is going to be uh, the... Uh, yes, I guess we'll have a visit from Earth 2 and maybe Harry. Yeah. And, well, well, Justin, and, de- and definitely Jeff, Jesse Quick will be back, for sure. Yep, yep. Now, and then this one I really want to talk about, because yeah. it's Joe West honored at City Hall, which HR was very quick to say, oh, good for you, Joe. Now, was that kind of a bait and switch? Like, is it a good thing that Joe West is being honored, or is it a bad thing? Maybe Joe's going to be chief of police. I don't know. I don't know. Well, I'm just going to... If you take if you take that headline and then add in the headline, Killer Frost at large. So, my theory right now because I, I've done, I've been revisiting previous Flash seasons, and the classic trip to Earth 2 shows Killer Frost killing Joe West. Yeah. And so it really would fascinate me to have that paradox drawn with this season, and that really being the moment that Caitlin goes full killer frost she she doesn't kill barry she doesn't team that kill the team members but she kills joe Ooh. like oh that that would just, that is oh that would ahead. be the fate that would be the fate worse than death oh gosh yeah and and the portrayal it's like all of the philo- the prophecies wrapped up in one yeah yeah so so i can i can see them thinking that that's a good thing for this season. So they're not going to change that. And unfortunately, that's one of the things that m- maybe they should have changed to prevent this other al- outcome of where Killer Frost kills Joe. Wow. Yeah. Oh, wow. That's pretty deep. Yeah. 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 That's pretty depressing. <laughs> it, it really is. And the more I think about it, the more I'm also like, Because writers, and I'm not saying specifically the Flash writers, but just in general, writers on TV are very against really turning their heroes to the villains. Yeah. And and any TV show, I mean, even Breaking Bad, and Breaking Bad is a great show, but at the end of the day, you cannot tell me that that season finale, Walter White didn't earn somewhat of a redemption by the end of it. Like, he was a villain, but he also was kind of like that, he he wasn't truly like detested by you by the end of it. So yeah. my fear is the the flash writers are still going to hold back and she's going to become more like that Captain Cold, which Captain Cold is a great character. Yeah. I just, I don't want an anti-hero. I, I want a real villain in her by no matter how long it takes. And I can be patient. Yeah. It might be maybe season four. Maybe season four, but I think I think season four you're gonna see reluctance maybe and then maybe have her be the real big bad of season five. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. We'll, we'll see. We we still got this well, half of the season keep, to work through. Keep your eyes on the internet movie database, folks. <laughs> <laughs> the production assistant always like lets slip something. <laughs> <laughs> and then immediately regrets it. Yep, yep. It's like, oh crap, oh shit, we gotta like uh scrub it, scrub it, scrub it. Scrub, scrub. I did not scrub. mean that. I kid, yeah, it was like, yeah, I think for a couple of days there, all of us were like, everybody on Twitter was like, screen capturing things from uh, IMDb as far as uh, Carlos Valdez's uh, credit lines, Savitar. <laughs> yeah, that was, that's crazy. I I know it happened to Teddy Sears last year, so. Yeah, exactly, but they didn't negate it. Yeah. Like, I think everybody called them out on it, but they didn't instantly go back to it and remove it. Yeah. So it's all it's all very interesting. Very. But 
The last two were Star Labs Museum Closes. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know. I really can't make anything unless it it's all connected, but who knows. Um, and then I added this one, not because it was a news headline, but because you posed the question to me earlier today. If, Cis if Cisco and HR missed anything when they were going through all of the different events. Yeah. And this is very interesting to me. Savitar says, and he didn't say this in the previous episode, but he says right before he kills Iris, now, finally, I have three of you. Mm. What the heck does that mean? I don't know. That's a good one. That's a good, that's a good question. Okay. I'm going out on a limb here. All right. There's been a lot of God talk on mm -hmm. this show. Yes, there has. <laughs> Technically speaking, there are three gods. <laughs> There's the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Right. So, if, if you're Judeo-Christian, yep. Yeah. For Hindu, yeah. list, for Hindu listeners, will will you know? We understand his, well, his, 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 his avatar is the Hindu god of speed, so. <laughs> So, and, and we're dealing with time travel and multiple Earths, so I just, I wonder if that's Savitar's endgame, and he's collecting these versions of Barry Allen, these versions of the Flash, because you could also apply the sun as being Kid Flash in a way, mm -hmm. because, so, so you could have that Holy Spirit, maybe that's how we're going to get the Black Flash. Mm. I don't know. I mean, Ooh. I'm just yeah, cause Black, I'm throwing out some stuff. You're throwing out some stuff, and Black Flash is has been mentioned to be returning this season. So, and he is in the Speed Force. He is where Savitar lives. Yes, that's right. Interesting. Very interesting. Hmm. So, but another thing that also, also I feel like it was deliberately not mentioned. Like, it's really interesting when they've clearly set up the context of this mission and they're going through. And I think there were some writing choices to have Harry make that remark about Joe being honored, about nobody mentioning what Savitar says, and that's going to be referenced later on. And And then you apply this, which... And we're geeks, so we know some tidbits that have been thrown out there over the break about the future of the season. So yeah. our our theory spirals are a bit educated, if I do say so. I think so. Yeah, I, I would agree. <laughs> yeah. So so that any other thoughts on all of those Easter eggs? Um, it'll be interesting to see which ones were red herrings. Yes, that too. Because uh, there's always that factor, too. I mean, they just may throw stuff out there just to, uh, you know, get us all up in a spun up on one little point, And then they'll just, like, uh -huh, you know, fake us out. And and they will all be like, oh, you got us. So. <laughs> oh, that would be, I think we'll be a bit more dramatic in yeah. the internet. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, well you know, it'll, yeah, it'll, it'll, you know, it won't be like the crazy <laughs> football fan who like runs and destroys his TV after, uh, uh, you know, after his team loses, but you know, so there there will be a lot of a, uh, you know, a lot of swearing going on from from some quarters of Flash, Flash family. So, so <laughs> it could also. Okay, you also asked me like, why didn't HR in the future shoot his gun? Yeah. And I may be too quick to assume that this is the case. So maybe this is another red herring because they did explain in the previous first half of the season that nobody else outside of those who possess the speed force can see Savitar. Yeah, but see, I felt I felt Cisco saw him too when this was all going down. Oh, oh, I that's a perspective thing. Yes. Well, see, but and, see, and, you know, since Cisco can do the interdimensional travel kind of stuff, he he might be able to see it. Whereas, you know, HR or that could be Harry up on the roof. Uh, but but I also feel like when in the show is from Barry's perspective. Yeah. 
So the fact that we saw it, I don't know if you can necessarily say that Cisco for sure saw Savitar. He for sure saw Iris floating in midair. Yeah. Like, I, I, I think the writers would be smart if they're really going to stick with this whole he's invisible to everyone else. Do a, like, a clear perspective mm-hmm. on what it was, because that's terrifying if you think about it. Yeah. Like, we don't have the seed for so all we would see is her just floating in midair, and the next second, something just stabs her. So you don't even see the knife or anything. Yeah. You just see a yeah. hole in blood, and it's like, oh, oh God, yeah, God. that would be, that's just, uh, you know, that's... Oh, that is full paranormal that, that's activity. Paranormal, sav- that's a savage, but yeah. uh, but uh, maybe that's why they don't do it. Maybe it's CW. <laughs> 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 oh, that's so and we but, talked about Joe. Yeah. <laughs> so so that's it, right? Yeah, we, I mean, as far as everything. yeah, I mean, as far as Joe and Iris, I hope they don't drag it out for so long. I mean, it just gets very tiring, just as far as the viewer, when they just drag some of these secrets out for so long. I mean, it's, it's, yes. it's been done the first two seasons, but let's not do it anymore. Yes, my prediction is probably episode 15. Okay. Yes, I'm going to go with that because my logic is usually that is a tented, like, that's the episode right before they go on their March break. Right, right. Before they come back in April. To close out the season. Yeah. So that seems like a pretty decent time. Mm-hmm. So so that would be my prediction about when he actually receives the news. And speaking of news, there's been so much. There was a lot over the break. Oh, my God. So you, you got to explain to me again your theory about Eddie Thon. So there's many theories out there. So one of the ones I think I put out there was Eddie... Uh, is somehow Savitar or what they've somehow merged when he was pulled into the vortex when he sacrificed himself at the end of season one uh, somehow ended up in the box and mm-hmm. and so that's one thought I have another bo- thought I have is maybe Kate maybe Iris uh, will have what happened to Cisco with seeing Dante uh, and oh, maybe, boy. you know, somehow the box comes out of the speed force, you know, maybe black flash or some, somehow, you know, Eddie comes, you know, that it, 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 you know, it won't be an alternate earth Eddie. It'll be our, you know, it'll be visions of Eddie. Um, and you sound real sh- sure about that. Um, that's one possibility. <laughs> it's not fixed. It's not. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, I just, but I think it that makes more sense to me than Eddie being Savitar. Yeah, you know, just keep, keep, let Savitar be Savitar. Why does he have to be anybody else? Uh, yeah, I mean, in the comic book, I mean, we don't know who he is, right? Uh, so and I think you know, I think that, that adds to the, uh, the 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 allure and the and the mysterious and dangerous nature of this of of Savitar as a villain. We don't know. You know, it doesn't always have to be one of the members of the team. Right. And I mean, like, it goes back to our original points about this episode is it was a refreshing in terms of what what story has already been told. And the whole I'm your friend. Now I'm your villain. That story they've told twice in back to back. season. you don't need to do that again. Let him be this unknown entity yeah. and and also for us it's just it's it's helpful because anytime somebody says jay long pause jarek yep. <laughs> during that pause i go immediately to hunter zolman <laughs> yeah exactly exactly it's so, so confusing where you know harrison wells actually is the mark on so it's like right. yeah come on this is yeah i told yeah i'm there with you right right and only tom cavanaugh can pull that off and still be cool yeah so exactly, exactly. it's it's very hard talent to find yeah um, Robbie Amell is going to come back. Yep, yeah, I think that's interesting. That's another. Uh, yeah, I don't know if it's going to be firestorm. It's going to be flashback. Um, He's probably going to die. He'll probably die again. <laughs> maybe this. Maybe that's what sets Caitlin off. You know, as far as Killer Frost. 
<laughs> you know, maybe that's how the Flash gets away with keeping pretty much all of their same characters. They just bring Robbie Mel back yeah. and kill him off. Yeah. Well, you know? One last thing as far as the reason why let's get back to Rick for just one second. Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, is I think from just a dramatic standpoint of storytelling, Eddie should stay dead. Because it cheapens mm-hmm. his sacrifice if they bring him back. As, as far as yes. alive Eddie. So that's why I think it's probably going to be some kind of vision of Eddie rather than the actual Eddie. Right. No, that that's a very good point. I mean, there's a reason why on Arrow, Tommy Merlin will always remain dead, mm-hmm. no matter how much we want to bring him back later on and everything. And he could be Prometheus, but I to it goes to your point about, no, that that's very important to retain that sacrifice that occurred and that really cemented the series as a whole. Mm-hmm. That being said, I would not mind seeing him come back from a different Earth, come back yeah. in a different capacity and a much more villainous n- nature. And and that could be very haunting, especially since Barry and Iris are in a such a good place. But to have him reemerge with the same face, a different man, it, it would be very interesting for their um, love story yeah, down the line. Yeah, it would be. It would be. And maybe we'll see him on Earth-19. Yeah. Yeah, maybe he's the Flash on Earth-19. Hey, there we go. There we go. There we go. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. That's, a good, that's a good theory, though. But we do know Robbie Amell's going to die. Yeah, we do. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Ronnie cannot. Yeah. Yeah. We already, Gorilla Grodd, that's coming. Yep. It's going to be epic, going to be a lot of green screen, but I think they'll pull it off, hopefully. They've done a great job with the special effects of Grodd. I mean, it's it's, there, it's on point. Yeah, yeah. I, now, the headline did talk about the damage that the gorillas did to this city. Does that mean that this two-part episode is going to take place in Central City, or is there a potentially a possibility we might be also headed over to Gorilla City. I think we're heading to Gorilla City. Thank God. Yes. <laughs> I was kind of disappointed when I read when they read out loud that headline cuz I'm like, "No, they're supposed to go to Gorilla City." They're gonna, yeah, I think I read uh, yeah, I, I I can't remember where I saw it, but it, I think it was a good source where I think I think the producers were saying we're, we're going to see Gorilla City third season, so yeah, yeah. No, I I, th- I I recall that too. So I'm pretty excited about that. Yeah. That's, I mean, it's and it's. Pro- I think it's going to be episodes 13 and 14. This, those were the same episodes last season when they went to Earth too. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it's pretty on track. <laughs> the Flash for all of their unknowns. It once you become a fan of it, it's yeah. kind of Love they do a lot of. Cut, copy and paste. Yeah, yeah. They have a, they have a, they have a season, you know, rhythm. And yeah, it does sort of flow. Their battle, battle rhythm as far as the, how they roll out stories does have a flow to it. And I think you're right. Yeah, yeah. But it's a procedural and 23 episodes. That's that's just insane yeah. to do. It's crazy. So, musical episode. Yes. Well, I. Yes, I, I think they will. They'll pull it off. I mean, will they? I, yeah, I, you're nervous. I'm, I, I, I'm understandably nervous, but yes, I think everybody is. Yeah, it's just in all how it's done. Uh, the, the one time I watched Mr. Robot was the, the the one the musical episode. I think it was in season two, and it was I watched it for a few minutes, and I was like. Hmm. Mr. Robot hasn't had a musical episode. I thought it was, maybe it was, oh, wasn't like a chill, maybe it was just like a musical interlude or something. But uh, There was one scene yes. where she was singing karaoke. Yeah. That is not a musical yeah, episode. We'll see. Yeah, that's where it lost me. So. Well, well. I'll just, I'll just give you a hard time. That, that was horrible because you had me really confused there I'm because you know how much of a fan I am I, of that show. So I'm like, I know. I, ha- did I-, I had to give you a hard time on the call. That was that's horrible. I mean, I I'm sure that the original Battlestar Galactica had an amazing musical episode. So I don't know why you're worried. Oh. <laughs> really don't. No, they had a musical they had a musical scene in there. 
Yeah, it was a straight up rip off from uh, Star Wars, but anyway. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, it's it's gonna be fun. Yeah, it'll be fun. The, the, the writers and the producers are pushing it, and I mean, you you cast Darren Chris. You have all of these great singers who are already part of both shows. The one thing that threw me, though, I have to admit, is because they, along with announcing when it was going to air, um, that Darren Chris was going to play Music Maestro, they also mentioned all of the singers. Yeah. <laughs> including John Barrowman, who is Malcolm Merlin. Oh, yes. Hmm. That that is bizarre. Why? 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 Please tell me why. <laughs> I, I guess they're trying to get. I don't know. I guess they're trying to get as much. Uh, you know, they already hyped this thing up enough. So they're just adding adding the cherry to the to the top of the of the Sunday. I mean, I'm sure he has a great voice, and that's why they're going to use him as a character. And he he does have that weird contract where he's not assigned to one specific show so much as the Berlanti verse as a whole. At the same time, I just am not the biggest fan of Malcolm Merlin. I really am not. So I don't, I'm pretty sure his musical number is going to be my least favorite. (laughs) Well, see, no matter what well, see, the bar is so low, so you you know he yeah so he will he will exceed all your low expectations. Wow, that's again very encouraging. So, but that's all I have, Will. That's it. Well, that is we had I think a, just like last night's episode, it was a lot of stuff going on, but I think we hopefully pulled it off tonight as far as discussing. All the various threads that they have cat and um, that they and storylines that they have tossed out for the second half of the season. Yeah, they it, they did, gave us a lot to work with. So and and I'm excited. I'm very curious. Yeah, yeah. It, it was as I said beginning. It was a very you know it's a very strong comeback reset episode to kick off the second half of the season and. I think we're I think we're all gonna have a store for an awesome ride down the the back half. Yeah, whoop whoop. whoop. So on that note, I'm gonna say please follow our crew on Twitter under at the Twitter handle at Scene and Nerd. That's Scene and Nerd. <laughs> <laughs> Friend us on Facebook. Send compliment or complaints to Matt Sal- Salazar for not making an appearance on Twitter. Everybody send really mean, ungrateful tweets to him. I always appreciate them. <laughs> and then, but most importantly, go to iTunes and rate, subscribe, comment on our feed, and let us know if Will's a keeper. Please let me come back. Or... Please let me come back. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so Will, where can people find you? Yes, you can find me on Twitter at at Will W I L L M Polk P O L K. It's a very hard one to remember. Yeah. It's very hard. <laughs> it's very hard. Yeah. Just look at me. It's almost like my Twitter handle, like at SJ Belmont. That's really hard to remember. Yeah. You just found me Will Polk and I got a lightning bolt beside my name. So I'm very easy to find. Yep. Yep. And tweet us all of your nerdy entertainment as such obsessions. And maybe we'll call you out and you can come and talk too. And on that note, I'm going to say you're welcome. Good night. Yay!